Pastor Jarrett here with a brief book review. Uh, this book is Social Justice Goes to Church, uh, The New Left Modern American Evangelical by John Harris. Uh, just to get an idea of the author, here's the book. Just to get an idea, John Harris was a, grew up as a pastor's kid. Uh, eventually, he went to Bible college and then got his Master's of Divinity from Southeastern Seminary, and he also has an MA in History from Liberty University. So there's the book. Uh, I'll just give you a book blur. So in order to understand why so many evangelicals recently support left-leaning political causes, it is important to know a little history. In in the 1970s, many campus radicals raised in Christian homes brought neo-Marxist ideas from the college back to the church with them. At first, figures like Jim Walsh, Ron Sire, Richard Mao made great gains for their progressive evangelical causes. But after the defeat of Jimmy Carter, the religious right stole the headlines. Today, a new crop of mainstream evangelicals has taken up the cause of the new left. Whether they know it or not, Pro-life evangelicals, rush to support movements like hashtag Black Lives Matter and hashtag Me Too, it is important to realize they are walking into footprints already laid down. Their mission may be more successful, but it is no, not new. To understand where evangelical social justice movement is heading, it is vital to understand the origin of the movement. Um, Social Justice Goes Church, New Life, Left, and Modern Biblical Answer from a Historical Perspective is a valid question. Why are American evangelicals moving left? Uh, this is a very good book. I really enjoyed reading it. I read it within a week. It's only about 170 pages long, so you can read it in a week easily. Uh, very readable. And really goes goes the history of social justice in the church. Uh, in particular, it starts in Jill Wallace's time around the 1960s or so, and its origin there, and how it these were these evangelicals who grew up in fundamentalist movements, didn't care for it, went to college, is a lot of them got exposed to Marxist socialist ideas. They had a crisis moment, a lot of them. And then they came back to evangelicalism because there's a part of the religious aspect of Christianity they still like. And so they took these two different ideologies and smashed them together. And now you have the social justice movement in the church. Now, keep in mind, their social justice outside the church that is not trying to mix Christianity at all. In fact, the secular version tries to remove Christianity. Uh, and then there's social justice in the church, which is trying to, to put these two things together, and they just don't mix. A lot of liberal theology uh, 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 and um, liberation theology, these ideas come from this time period. Uh, liberal theology comes from this time period. And so you may have heard of Jim Wallace, and he was a very well-known uh, Christian that went left and you, were trying to implement some of these social justice ideas. Now, I should say, because some of you may know J. Warner Wallace is a different person than Jim Wallace. J. Warren Wallace is a conservative Christian and a great apologist. Jim Wallace is not and is very much a left-leaning uh, Christian. Um, so it starts with, of course, the new left radicals, Jim Wallace, Wes Grimberg, Michelson, Sharon Gilger, John Alexander, Richard Mel, Ron Sire, and the Chicago Declaration. And he lays these individuals out because these individuals set the foundation for the social justice movement in the church. 
all the way back in the 1960s. It's where it actually started. And so these people really create this foundation of it. And uh, Chicago Settlement is where they declare where they stand on things. This would affect how they would approach the gospel, it becomes reverence a social gospel, no longer about sinners need of a saving, but more uh, we want to save a city in the sense of uh, poverty and stuff. Not, and keep in mind, uh, John Harris would not say that poverty doesn't matter. He wouldn't say that racism doesn't matter. And, 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 and people who critique, critique social justice, it isn't that we have problems uh, that, that, that we would say that that's, those aren't real things. No, racism is real. We're saying that social justice is not the solution. We're not saying that poverty isn't real. We're saying social justice is not. So the critique that uh, John Harris would have and others, and even myself, is is not the problems. These are there's some real problems, but social justice is not the solution we're looking for. And ultimately, John Harris and myself and others say the ultimate problem is a heart problem, which is why they need the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and that they realize they're a sinner and they're saving, and that it's about trans people, transforming people's lives to transforming their heart, and that only is only through the gospel. Um, and that's what we say. Now, unfortunately, this the social justice movement redefines the gospel. And in fact, you'll hear nowadays and uh, in in this book, it talks about the whole gospel. Again, this is not a new term. This is an old term. And it's the idea that if you don't do X, Y, Z, you don't really have the whole gospel. If you don't, if you're not giving charities to the poor, if you're not trying to do recon racial reconciliation in a specific way, then you don't have the whole gospel. Instead of saying the whole gospel is you're in a sinner who needs salvation and that Jesus Christ offers salvation and he, uh, and if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are saved and and God will work through you and sanctify you and transform you. That's the whole gospel. To add anything else is adding to the gospel. And that's what this term, hold gospel, does. It adds to the gospel. Um, and really is trying to create a radical community. It's very much sometimes, as you read about this, it really talks about more... If 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 it was Christian, a almost a theistic Christian country, but we don't live in a theistic country or world. Um, this might be fine to do inside your church and your inside your church community. Great, that's really where some of the ideas should stay. It's in your church community, and and, and maybe you reach out to your church community. But the problem with the social justice movement and the social gospel is it's done through political means and political government means. And that ends up being a, a oppressor. So in order to defeat oppression, they create a new form of oppression. And that uh, is ultimately the problem with social justice is they are trying to create a solution to a problem, but by doing that, they create bigger problems and is not the solution. And so uh, this is a good book. And it goes from the 1960s and the influencers on influenced society to contemporary time. And even ends a little bit with Tim Keller. Now there are some things I love that Tim Keller says, but he very much has a social gospel or social justice bent to him. Um, he tries to balance it out. But there's no mistake in the influence that the social justice movement has had in his thinking. And as you read the part that he has about Tim Keller, from his own words and who influenced him, how he views these issues is definitely from a social justice perspective. Again, John Harris and myself were not saying that these social issues are important, but the social justice movement is not the solution. It's with 
of biblical justice. It's through the transforming of people's hearts. It's through real justice. And so this just goes over the history. And if you want to understand what is the history, what is the origin, what's its foundation, this is a good place to start. Highly recommend it. The next book I will be doing once I finish it is Why Social Justice is Not Biblical Justice. This is by Scott David Allen. I am part of the way through. I'm actually right about, uh, about there. So I'm moving along through it, but this one will take a little bit longer to read. Uh, it's a good read. And in, 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 in nice in him is he came, he's been on the side of social justice. He saw the problems, and now he is explaining why that's not biblical justice. It's a great book. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and then the next book I want to read after this one would be Vody Bachman's Fault Line book. I'm um, really looking for that. I like Dr. Vody Bachman. I highly recommend him as a pastor, preacher, teacher. Excellent. Um, and um, and then the last one, and this one's not a Christian author that I'm going to be looking at, but is um, James Lindsay's book. Um, and I can't think of the name of the book right now, but he is a professor. He's actually not a Christian, but he has dealt with the, the umbrella thing that covers all of this, which is critical theory. Critical theory came from a, a school, a Frankfurt school, and it's really where all this idea of oppression and oppressor comes from. And the Frankfurt School, uh, its origin is Marxist and socialist ideas. And James Lindsay reviews that, explains how this has impacted the academic world because he's a professor uh, at a college university. He had seen it first hit the academic world and specifically the atheist world, which he was originally a part of. It hit them and really damaged them the academic atheist world and now it just has gone from there to the political world to the church world and so i'm looking forward to reading that book too but back to the original topic social justice goes to church highly recommend it read it uh, especially if you're a history buff you'll love it um, have a great day and blessed day